Hi, this is Mike Henriksen from Velocity 2014 in New York City. I'm here with Hari Kunin, the R&D manager for HP Cloud at Hewlett Packard. Hari, how you doing? Pretty good, thanks Mike. Uh, thank you for being here. So, you know, there's a lot of change going on in the cloud industry, and there are a lot of players trying to get in, and a lot of players that are there. So how do you see the cloud market shaping up? Yeah, certainly, yeah. If you look at the uh, IT industry, especially in the data center space over the last five, 10 years, uh, everyone has been going through a transformation in the data center. You know, it started with uh, standardization. There were too many different moving parts and they started standardizing. And then they started consolidating. And then the next phase was all about virtualization, right? In 2007, 2008, uh, VMware started mm -hmm. uh, come uh, revolutionizing the virtualization space, uh, especially in the x86 market. Um, and then the, with virtualization, a great degree of automation started coming into play. So over the last couple of years, if you see the trend is towards this cloud market, which is basically virtualization plus automation on steroids. So more or less, that's the trend that's shaping up in the industry. And when we see the whole space, what we see is there are two important uh, trends that are shaping up within the cloud market itself. One, I would say, is all about hybrid, mm -hmm. and uh, second is about open source. And uh, I can explain in a bit more detail on what hybrid and open source really mean and yep. what it means to cloud vendors in general. So let's talk a little bit about the hybrid thing because one of the things that we see when enterprises, and, and I like to use the word shift rather than transformation, because I think it is for a lot of large organizations a shift in their business to move to the cloud. So is there an on-ramp or a ramp that basically allows a company to slowly migrate to the cloud? Or is it the fire hose, you take it all or nothing, and you put dump everything into the cloud, or what is the strategy there? Yeah, actually what you just described is what I actually would have ta tried to explain in probably a longer way of what hybrid really means. Because there is, when you talk about a, a paradigm change, like what cloud is doing to the customers today, uh, there is no, just one on ramp. There has to be an on ramp. There is no just you know fork and lift is not uh, yeah. the way it's going to happen, right? So, a lot of customers we see, you know, they uh, start with a low priority application or a dev, to, dev test market, and then they start moving it in a public cloud, um, and then once they are comfortable with either the security needs or once they are comfortable with the uh, the quality of service they are getting or any criteria they say, they set that is important for their success, then they start considering cloud in a larger market. On day one, nobody is going to say. And then you might have heard a lot about these things called pets and cattle, right? I mean, cloud is also, on the one hand, a lot of enterprise customers think of cloud as a vehicle for standing up their enterprise application because it provides a lot of... Uh, uh, automation and so cost reduction and so on. But on the other hand, there is a new generation of applications that are being written. Uh, you mm -hmm. might have heard them as pets and cattle, where you know pets are your pampered applications uh, that require a high level of uh, um, uh, HA capabilities, performance capabilities, and then there are these cattle applications. They are those the first ca category are like the pets you really pamper them, feed them well keep them happy, and then there is cattle where you just build those applications and you assume everything is going to fail and they do fail pretty often, but then you build those applications in such a way that they are resistant to tolerance. Hey, one web server goes down, who cares? You start the next one up, everything is stateless, you can scale out Fall and over. so on. Yeah. So those are, so those kind of stateless, scale out, self-healing, elastic applications are what traditionally are suited for clouds. You might have seen examples like you know um, Netflix running its entire streaming operations from AWS. Those are some of the poster child applications for cloud. But that doesn't mean those are the only applications because if you go to a large enterprise, you have a extraordinarily big spectrum of applications that are written. So you can build new applications that are resilient to failure and so on, the cloud-like applications, but you also need to move a lot of your traditional enterprise applications 
into the cloud space because you want to take advantage of the environment that you are sitting in. So you have both the pets and the cattle and that kind of hybrid model there, but we also have a hybrid model of a lot of companies are proprietary and have proprietary servers and software, and then we have open source exactly. technologies mixed in, right. which is another sort of hybrid. So how does HP go about realizing a vision of a cloud that works for everybody, but you've got a really heterogeneous set of technologies trying to write to a cloud. Uh, your, your observation is exactly what we are also observing. So, hybrid is actually a very uh, abused word. There yeah. are people who talk about hybrid cloud, hybrid IT. Uh, what does it really mean? Hybrid, I would say, is just a variety of needs and it can be a standard traditional enterprise uh, uh, environment or it can be a cloud environment or your private cloud and public cloud or maybe even managed cloud. It all need, but the most important thing is especially a company like HP which has a significantly wide portfolio of customers and products, we cannot assume that one type of delivery model is going to be the right model for every customer. There are customers, the traditional enterprises which haven't even moved to the cloud era. They are still have, for number of reasons, they have it in the traditional enterprise uh, data centers. And then there is the new uh, other extreme where you have the AWS type of clouds, Google Cloud, HP Cloud, they hosting applications on behalf of the, uh, the customers. So what we really want to do as HP is we want to provide the customer a choice of how to consume the IT services in whatever is appropriate for their applications at that time. Okay, now we, in this context, I think open source is a key technology. So when you move from one environment to the other, as long as the underlying platform speaks yeah. the same language uh, and looks the same, you can still move the environment from one to other with very minimum disruption. So as if you write, for, let me give a more concrete example as opposed to a theoretical or abstract example. You might have run a lot of CLIs or your toolkit, everything done um, for, for automating certain tasks in your data center. As long as they start, talk the standard APIs, which in this case we are OpenStack is, uh, is the standardization we have bet on, then it doesn't matter whether you're consuming that service from Rackspace OpenStack or you're consuming from HP Public Cloud's OpenStack or you're doing it from a native OpenStack implementation you have in your uh, private data center also. There may be minor changes uh, because the version one versus version seven may have some differences, but it's not a forklift upgrade. So that is what the power of uh, having a common platform and bidding it on an open source tool like OpenStack can bring to the customer the value that they can bring, get derive out of this is tremendous. Do you see that the industry is headed for three major platforms in the cloud? Or or many more, I don't know if there's going to be many more, but it seems like we have an H, not HP, but we have a Amazon AWS, pretty dominant, pretty big. We have Microsoft with Azure, or Azure, whatever you, however you want to say it, is another formidable platform. And then we have OpenStack, and the different flavors of OpenStack. Are, is that how it's shaping out, or do you yeah. see more, do you see something else happening? Yeah, I think you, you've summed it up pretty reasonably well, the way I see it as well. But if you look at uh, the, some of the, the couple of examples that you gave, Amazon and Azure, and I would even put Google in that category. I mean, these are, I would say, the, the big box cloud vendors yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Um, that's they provide tremendous value. I mean, the Amazon, to, it's great credit to them. They have pioneered this industry when nobody even thought it would become uh, the way it has happened today. But they they provide a, de a service model where you consume it from their data center and a public cloud paradigm. So th I would say Amazon, Azure, and Google are sort of that in that league. And then there is this open source movement called OpenStack that has uh, come along in the last three years, but it's really having a hockey stick growth in the last uh, 
mm -hmm. uh, year mm -hmm. or so and expected to continue this momentum in the next year or two. Um, so those uh, OpenStack has a significant um, advantage in that it it can be used by public cloud service vendors. You know, the, we see a lot of Rackspace has done this, HP Cloud has done this uh, as a public cloud service, but it also provides uh, an enterprise to host that software in their private data center. So I think the first three are, I would still call them proprietary um, yeah. uh, environments. It does bring a lot of value, and then there is an open source alternative coming through OpenStack, and we also have to, because you, you are looking at this industry, I, I would also say that recent announcement by VMware, the vCloud uh, hybrid services is also shaping up to be a very interesting uh, dimension to the to that to this cloud mm -hmm. market where uh, if you look at enterprises today they are predominantly on VMware hypervisor virtualization hypervisor uh, today and they are providing a bridge to their customers to have the services consumed from a public cloud model while having a bridge to their private data centers. I think that's also has a lot of potential in the future, mm -hmm. but if you are looking for a truly open alternative that can be in your data center or from a public cloud, I would say OpenStack stands out. Hari, if we had this discussion 12 months from now in New York next year at this time, what will have changed in the cloud market and specifically for HP? Yeah, what I specifically would expect uh, for the betterment of cloud market and HP in specific would be uh, there is a significant amount of adoption of uh, cloud, OpenStack based clouds. I think what, where we see OpenStack today is there's a significant amount of mind share. A lot of companies have uh, contributed in various capacities, but we need to see real customers deploying it in real large numbers. And building an ecosystem B around Building it. an ecosystem. Um, so we, we, th at the end of the day, we want to see cu customers successful with OpenStack, and within the next 12 months, I would expect that we have a significantly higher number of productive deployments, and HP is doing a lot of work to make that happen, along with a lot of OpenStack uh, community vendors also. So. We want to see a significant on-ramp on and productive deployments of OpenStack. Excellent, Ari. We look forward to seeing you next year at this time. Good fun. Thank you. Thank you.